Uh, this is the article that I read. Um, I want you to look at this image again of God. His arm around his uh, naked girlfriend. And um, this, this shape that's around, it kind of looks like a jellyfish. Um, here's the article that was in... Um, uh, let's see here. Let's just read the article. Michelangelo hit anatomy lesson in the Sistine Chapel. Human brainstem is depicted in the image of God. Neurosurgery authors argue. July 19, 2010. Detailed analysis of Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel frescoes reveals a secret uh, that's been hidden for 500 years. An image of the human brainstem in a panel showing God at the beginning of the creation. According to an article in the May issue of Neurosurgery, the official journal of the Congress of Neurological Surgeons. Journals published by Lippincott, Williams, and Wilkins, a part of Walters Kluwer Health, a leading provider. It sounds like a commercial uh, to me. Uh, look at the quote. He says, We propose that Michelangelo, a deeply religious man and an accomplished anatomist, intended to enhance the meaning of this iconographically critical panel and possibly, and possibly document his anatomic accomplishments by concealing the sophisticated neuroanatomic rendering with the image of God. Um, in fact, let me um, let, let me skip on down here. The concealed neuroanatomy is found in Michelangelo's painting of the separation of light and darkness, one of a series of nine Sistine Chapel uh, panels showing scenes from the book of Genesis. According to uh, uh, Sulk and Tamargo, anatomically correct ventral depiction of the brainstem can be seen in God's name. Now I want to I want to show you this imagery here that was linked with this particular article. They're, what they're saying is is that God and all of this crowd that's with him, including his wife, are inside the depiction of the human brain. Look at this. Um, I don't know my brain parts. Uh, we have the optic chasm, uh, pituitary stalk. I know about that. Vertebral artery. In other words, the artery that runs up and uh, the medulla, the medulla oblongata on the back of your neck that goes down, that it connects with your spine. All of those are depicted right there. And, and this actually showed up first in, I think, a Journal of American Medical Association article back in the 1990s where some scientists and some, and some physicians were looking at that and going, you know what, that looks like a, like a cross-section. You cut a brain in half, okay, like, kind of like mine is. You cut a brain in half and look at it, and that's what Michelangelo appears to have drawn in this image. Okay, so I, I just want you to... We're not done yet, okay? We're not done yet. Because I was looking at this thing, and I was just going... Now, remember, remember, um, E.T., when he gives the illumination here, okay? You go back to this image here, the brain. Here's God giving man illumination. Here's the brain, the mind, okay? Here's the E.T., Touching, he's going to touch his forehead here. What, what's, what's behind here? What is it that when, um, that when the serpent uncoils itself and goes up the 33 bones, okay, it goes up the 33 bones of your spinal column, it's going to reach inside of you. This is what you do when you practice yoga. Which, by the way, the word yoga means connect. All these churches that are named Connect, or we're going to have a connection, or come to our connection group, that's what the word yoga means. And it basically, when you're practicing yoga, you know what you're trying to connect with? The gods. The God. The serpent God that is coiled up in your spine, unraveling itself like DNA going up your spine. And then it reaches into the part deep inside of your brain, the center point of your brain, and somebody sent me, um, in fact I had two people send me this deal from Centerpoint Research uh, Institution. They have this new audio deal where you can go into a trance just like that with it. I, I don't encourage you to investigate this. I, I've, you know, I've thought, man, I need to get that so I know it, and, and I'm, the Holy Ghost is going, no, nah, no, nah, you don't need that. And so I, I'm going to stay away from this. But it's going to reach into your third eye located in the center point of your brain. That third eye is associated with the all-seeing eye capstone on, uh, on the back of the $1 bill and the great seal, the unfinished pyramid showing the two strands of man's DNA, and the third strand represented, represented by the third eye being awakened inside of you. Literally something else added, 
one, two, three, something else added to your two-strand DNA. That's what the third eye represents. And what it's called... What they say that that serpent, when it's climbing up your back and going into your brain, when the serpent's head makes contact with your pineal gland. Now some people pronounce it pineal gland. Pineal gland. I don't care how you pronounce it. It's this little bitty gland in the sort of in the deep recesses of your brain, right behind your forehead here. And they say, now don't you listen to this, the New Agers say that when this pineal gland is activated, you receive illumination. Okay? Light awareness, light consciousness. All these terms they use have to do with awakening and awareness and light. And all of these things they say is going to happen. Illumination is going to take place when your pineal gland is activated. Now I've been, I've been seeing that for a long time. And um, I haven't really, I, I, it didn't really click on me what was going on. Um, God just works in, in wonderful, wonderful, magnificent ways. Um, here at our secret broadcasting compound, one of my daughters, Alicia, works for me here. And uh, she answers the phone and takes orders and stuff like that and gets me, you know, fried chicken and stuff. And um, we sent her off to, uh, to school. And she was going to be a medical assistant, and she got she was really really good at medical terminology. And I said, Alicia, what's what's the pineal gland do, and what is melatonin? And she said, Dad, let me let me teach you what I know about this. And she began to reel some some stuff some stuff off, and she read some articles and printed them out for me, and, and helped me out with the research. So I got to give her credit. Pat on the back to Alicia Bug. Um, that's my pet name for her. Uh, and you don't know that, okay? You don't know that. Uh, but anyway, um, so I started doing a little research on that and what exactly the pineal gland does down inside of your mind. And I'm going to I'm going to read you an article now from actually a New Age or Newage website. Newage because it rhymes with sewage. Newage website concerning what the pineal gland is good for. Why why this activation of the pineal gland is so necessary. Here we go. Okay, uh, the pineal gland is a little organ situated between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. In other words, it's like the center point, the fusion point of your brain, uh, in the exact center of the brain, and has been long, uh, long been thought to have been a vestigial remnant of a once larger section of the brain. The common perception is that the pineal gland is an evolutionary leftover, just like the appendix. But contrary to Western science and medicine, the pineal gland is the master. Gland. You catching this? It's the master gland. The newage people believe that the pineal gland is the absolute most important part of your brain. And it's right in the center. It's, in the, it's like, and if you look at this image of the brain, remember those mazes that people walk? That's what that looks like. And it's getting them to the center point where the, um, the half man, half beast, the centaur is located and he needs to be freed. That's what this imagery is all about. It all connects together, folks. But anyway, um, it's the master gland. The pineal gland is your third eye or seat of clairvoyance. The power to see objects or events that cannot be perceived by the senses. It is also known as the eye of Ra or Hiru, which is which they call God. It allows you to commune with the cre mm -mm -mm -mm. it allows you to commune with the Creator and with positive force spirits in other dimensions. Stop right here.